Well, James Henry, that's a lot of compliments in one sentence there, but thank you very much for that. That's very kind of you. And like I say, it's been quite quiet without James. Luckily, Byron's come in, and it's always funny when the two of them are together because we see quite a bit of entertainment when they are together in camp. Lots of sort of baiting one another and giving each other trouble. So it is quite quiet without James, and I'm sure Byron is missing James quite a bit. I'm sure there's been a few Skype phone calls here and there to keep Byron happy. But as you can see, the status quo of things has changed slightly. Tinio has now gone to the other side of the carcass, and all the cubs were pushed off. They had to move. The interesting thing is a fifth lioness appeared out of nowhere behind us. I don't know where she came from, if she was here originally and we just drove past her to start, but she is here. So all five lionesses, we've got one on the far left who is just hidden in the grass. She's over there. So that's the one that just arrived out of nowhere. We don't know where she was, but she must have been lying in the grass. Then we've got two together over here. Then there's a fourth one on the right of those two lying next to one another and then right at the back is the fifth lioness in the corner now i don't think anyone's actually checked that fifth lioness right at the back there but potentially maybe the little cub is somewhere at the back there who knows we might just have a little look there just now and just check in that grass and see if maybe there is some sort of sign of the little cub but i haven't seen any tracks for it and when we were tracking this pride it was just the females and the cubs that were walking along and the male joined i think only much later because i found his tracks on top of all of the females tracks coming this way so i don't think the little cub is here but i wonder the female that we just noticed behind us she definitely doesn't have any suckle marks i don't think it's her i think she was just resting somewhere where we couldn't see her and she's just popped out and since other than her i've been trying to check all females for suckle marks I've only seen the one with the, the sort of blind eye and she doesn't have. Then I've seen the mother, one of the mothers of these cubs, which has got two good eyes, but honey colored. She doesn't have, I haven't seen amber eyes or the young female yet. So it's one of those two that must have the cubs as we surmise. But at this stage, I don't know which one. It's difficult to see. Like I say, they lying in ways that is quite hard. And it's also the grass is very long. And over the course of today, as they flatten the grass, so we should be able to then work out who exactly is the mother of the cubs and particularly if we come this afternoon and one of them is missing then we're going to know for sure so donald you're wondering if the lions are going to lick this carcass completely clean or if they're going to leave bits for others to scavenge now if you have a look at that male lion and if we turn the ambience right up and I keep quiet, you might be able to hear how rough his tongue is. And he's busy grooming every little bit that he can off of that carcass. Can you hear that? You hear how rough that is? It's almost like sandpaper. <coughs> So what he's going to do is they're going to lick as much as they can off. Ultimately, though, lions aren't as patient as some other animals. And as it gets a little bit hotter, so this lion is going to start getting a little bit kind of bored of this whole situation. And they're going to leave the ribs with little bits of meat on it. But they'll eat most of the legs, the neck, all of that. And then there'll be a few sort of internal organs that are left. I can see there's looks like the spleen lying off to the right of the male's tail there. You can just see it lying in the grass. So things like that the vultures and hyenas will come and pick up later and if we came to this carcass in i would say about 48 hours time there probably will be so little left of it in fact we would just find this rib cage that would be picked absolutely clean because the one animal out here that can clean bones like no other is a hooded vulture and they will be here by the end of today i can tell you now as soon as this cloud cover breaks which it's starting to do so the vultures are going to get up and they're going to start using the thermals to fly and once they spot this they're going to all come and land in this area and then we'll have a situation where the hooded vultures get in and they'll be able to actually clean up what's going on but look at this cub this cub is about as deep into the carcass as it possibly can be look we can't go any further in, and Tinio's going to get cross with you now, now. I think it's lucky that the rib cage is protecting it at this stage. But that's quite interesting. It looks like... I know this is quite gross. Oh, it's sat back down now, but it looked like that little cub had a tapeworm hanging out 
of its backside, or is it just bits of the carcass? No, it was just a bit of the carcass. It almost looked like a tapeworm. Oh no, it's blood that's hanging down from its inside. So you can see there, it's a bit of grass that has blood all over it. But for a second, it looked like a tapeworm that was hanging down. You sometimes do get that situation. And because they've been sitting in blood and all kinds of other things, so the grass has taken on that color, and then the grass is just sticking to them as the blood is drying while they're feeding. So. I thought maybe I have seen it before in lines with tapeworms and Salala pride males. At one stage, two of them walked around with tapeworms hanging out, or some sort of parasitic worm hanging out of their rear end. And so it does happen. I mean, you can imagine these guys eat rotting meat, and there's all kinds of things that they must pick up from it. <laughs> Barefoot Spectral Owl, I like your Twitter handle, and you want to know how long a carcass would last for these guys in terms of it be viable to eat before it becomes so sort of off that they leave it alone. Well, lions, I hate to tell you, are pretty manky creatures. They will eat carcasses that are very rotten. In fact, I've seen lions feeding off a giraffe carcass that was so rotten, the, the meat was green and bubbling in places. And so really not very pleasant at all. And so they will definitely, definitely eat for as long as there is meat on this carcass. You can see in this particular case, they've eaten so much that by this afternoon, which they'll still be here this afternoon, they will have cleaned up everything and there'll be really so little left that it's not viable for them to even stay here. But theoretically, normally with lions, and when we saw that drought period where food was easy to catch, the lions were actually leaving a carcass every day. They would basically eat while it was still fresh and the blood was still flowing but after that they would leave it and leave half buffalo all over the place so at the end of the day it just it depends on availability of food as well as the size of the carcass i've also seen you know lions stay on a buffalo carcass for four days so it just depends on on the individuals themselves but most of the time they eat the, the rate at which they eat means that they get everything before it actually goes off too quickly look at him cleaning the ribs now isn't that cool Yes, we're talking about you. So, John, you're wondering what organs they don't eat. Well, generally, it depends on the size of the carcass. Something like an impala, they'll pretty much eat every little bit of it, um, just because there's so little amount of nutrients for a pride of this size. This zebra has filled everybody up with really good meat and good nutrients, and so they can leave, afford to leave things like the spleen and the gallbladder and those kind of things. But they will most definitely, the first thing that would have been eaten out of this would have been the heart, the kidneys, the liver. Those are all packed full of nutrients, and they full of vitamins and minerals that they don't get just from pieces of meat and so you'll find that those were eaten first and then the rest of the meat was eaten and then they'll start going into the stomach linings um, and the intestines and those kind of things but often you'll find spleens gallbladders um, those sort of organs just left on the side like that one that we saw just now and I, I mean I'm not 100% sure it is the spleen but it's something of that description it could even be a bit of the stomach that is there that's been emptied out now we're going to, like I say, keep going with these guys, see how much of this they can actually put away in the morning because it seems like they're just never ending and this carcass is getting less and less and less. And while we do that, let's go all the way across to Mr. Hendry, the expert, the English teacher, the man of the moment with his water buck in the Masai Mara. 